Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So in this video, I'm going to give you the web developers road map. There's a lot of them out there. And so there's a lot of myths being perpetuated by people out there, young nerdlings. Here's the good news. You don't need to learn nearly as much as you think before getting a job. So that's number one. One of the big problems I see with so many of these roadmaps is they list out tons and tons and tons of technology. And what happens is that people become PERMA students. They never actually start working in the field. And so it's very frustrating and they give up. And, and then they hear from this person says, oh, you got to learn MERN. And this person says, no, you got to learn Django and Python. And this person says, you got to learn Git. And this person says, you got to learn whatever. Here's the thing. And this is how it really works. You learn your fundamentals. I'm going to give you those details in a second. And then the key is to get building real projects as soon as humanly possible. So what I have people do is once they learn the fundamentals, you go out and you build a simple website for a local small coffee shop or the butcher or the independent auto mechanic. Or maybe you got a small accounting firm that wants to update their website. The key is to get your hands dirty with real code and you start working with things, you start deploying things. It's very different than follow, following along with a bunch of tutorials. Tutorials should be a very small part of the learning process. Most of your learning should be actually building things. So people say to me, well, how can I get a job if I don't learn? Well, that's the key. The teacher does two things, simplifies, and number one, teacher filters out what you need to know. You have to understand that there is so much out there in the technology world in terms of development and programming and coding. There's so much out there that there's no coder in the world that knows more than 1% or 2% of what is out there. Even, for example, when I was a hardcore Java developer for years and years, I still used a very small subset, a, uh, only a part of Java. I was an expert in Java web, JSP, servlets, POJO implementations, MVCs, lightweight frameworks. But there's a whole other area of Java that I didn't get into. It's Java server phases, EGB 1, 2, 3, um, and much, much, many, many, many other things. Uh, Java Swing for client-side development. These are all things that I just kind of dabbled in a little bit, but I wasn't hardly a professional. But that's okay. I still had uh, tons of work just doing what I was doing in Java. Now, if you scale outside of Java, I'm just using Java as an example, if you scale outside of Java, you look at all the different competing languages, Java, C Sharp, PHP, Python, Ruby, uh, JavaScript, and there's many other, TypeScript, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you can go bananas trying to learn all this stuff. And it, that's where you're going to, you don't want to get into that trap, that t tutorial help. I've seen so many people get caught up in that. So let's get back to, this is the actual roadmap based on my almost 30 years experience being a professional developer. This is what you have to do. It's great news. So number one, we're going to talk about the web stack. Number one, you learn HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Learn to build modern, responsive websites. That's the first thing you do that. Once you've done that, where you can build a modern, responsive website, then you start looking at front-end web frameworks just a little bit. You look at maybe touch a little bit, maybe spend a day on Bootstrap, spend maybe a, a day on Tailwind, just to understand the very, very basics. So you're, you're at this point now where you got these things understood. Now it's time to actually build real projects. Notice I didn't mention React and Git and Node and all, not yet. Start building real projects. Go out there, find the coffee shop who needs to get their site updated. Find the independent, I don't know, uh, dry cleaner who wants to get their site updated. Doesn't matter. Because you have to understand, when you're actually building projects for real, even simple projects, this is going to teach you so much more than a tutorial. The analogy I like to make, uh, I used to box. The analogy I like to make is that one three-minute three minute, three round sparring session, full contact, is going to be worth six months, seven months of training outside of the ring. One project, building even a simple website, implementing somebody's PayPal, putting up somebody's WordPress, is going to be worth months and months and months and months of tutorials in terms of your 
ability to think like a pro coder developer in terms of your advancement. One thing that a lot of noobs don't understand is that the development in the, the development game, in the coding game, you do a lot of your learning on the job. You get paid to learn. So a good course, a good teacher, a good mentor will get you there as quickly as possible to the point where you know enough to get your foot in the door so that you can actually start building things. It's understood. It's understood uh, by anybody who's hiring a developer that when you first bring them in, there's going to be a lot to learn. So one of the problems that noobs have to face is a lot of companies are looking for experienced developers. They want people with this many years experience. How do you get that, that crucial two to three years experience equivalent to get that first job? It's kind of a catch-22, right? You can't get the first job unless you have two or three years experience. What do you do? Well, I got the uh, solution for you. Solution simple. You do what I just said you do. You go out, you do two to three small free, if necessary, free freelance projects. What employers are looking for is proof that somebody can actually execute and produce real code, a real project. Because producing real code in a real project has much more to do than just uh, being able to code. You have to be able to communicate. You have to have those soft skills. You have to be able to organize. You have to be able to deliver on time. These are the things that they look for. So many courses and programs don't cover that. They have to cover that. The number two thing that employers look for when they're interviewing people is your soft skill. They want to know that you can communicate so on and so forth. Very important, guys, very important. So how do you develop those soft skills and interpersonal skills? What well, are specific training you can do and so on? But the key really is to get into the ring, if you will, and actually build something. When you come for a job interview, you can say, look, I built this site for this coffee shop here, and I implemented this company's WordPress, and we hooked it up to uh, an online shopping system. I built somebody's uh, website from scratch, and we implemented Bootstrap here. That is music to the ears of prospective employers, because it shows that you can execute, you can communicate, and you can get things done. Another thing that's very common in development, it's, actually, it's not actually very common, it's, it's par for the course, is that you're going to learn new things all the time. You have to expect that when you are, especially in the first three to four years as a developer and you're being paid, you're going to learn new things all the time. You may be hired, for example, as a Node developer or maybe a React developer, who knows, whatever. So you're a React developer and your boss will come in one day and say, listen, we got a bunch of back office scripts that have to be updated. It's all in Python. And you're like, well, I never did Python before, so I'll go learn Python and just do the work. This is common. Now, some of you may go, oh, no, i got to learn another language. you got to understand, it's like learning to drive a car. Once you learn to drive a BMW, to drive a Porsche or to drive an Audi is not a big deal, right? Cars are cars. Same thing with all these programming languages, whether it be JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, PHP, Python, whatever. Go, TypeScript, with some few exceptions like Rust and Assembler or something, with few exceptions, all of these modern languages are very similar. So in my freelancing career, I would go out there, it, when I got mature as a freelancer rather, I would go into a job and I would sit down, I, I, would have, I would look over the spec of the job, what technologies they were using, and oftentimes, I would choose a language or a framework or a library that I never used before. Because at that point, I was a professional developer. I had written software in many different languages. And I knew that because I knew my fundamentals really well, I could learn a new language like this. I could new, learn a new framework like this. So when you are starting off, going back to beginners again, don't be chasing the frameworks in our libraries. Yes, the Node people are going to say, you got to learn Node. The React people say, you got to learn React. The Vue people, you got to learn uh, Vue, et cetera. Eh, no. You may work 10 years in the game and never do React. You may work 10 years as a developer and never touch Python. Who knows, right? I've seen all different flavors. So even in my mentoring group, we have people who have done all kinds of different things. It's, uh, it's 
quite diverse. So don't get caught up on a particular technology, no matter what anybody says, how this is so special, blah, blah, it's BS. What's special is you know your fundamentals well, and two, you can show that you can execute on those fundamentals, meaning you can build things for real. One last point about uh, development software. Depending on where you live in the world, the trend is, generally speaking, you do not need a degree or a certification to get a job. You need to show experience first and foremost. The need for degrees, although in certain areas, I think in Europe, um, is falling quite a bit. For example, I saw a statistic recently, in terms of all jobs in the US, uh, over 60% of employers now, 60%, the majority, strong majority, do not require people have a degree anymore. Employers are starting to realize more and more and more that people with college degrees are not necessarily a benefit to the business. And in fact, Apple, IBM, and I think it was Google, they did a study on their own employees and they found that there was no performance difference between somebody with a degree or with no degree. So even Google said a couple years ago, you can look it up, they said, if you want to become a professional developer, do not go to college. This is Google, it's not me, although I've been saying it for much longer. Google has said, don't go to college, waste of time. You should be able to get through a, a coding program um, like mine, I'm gonna promote it, but within six months. That's working part-time, part-time. You don't need to do a three-month full-time boot camp or two, or heaven forbid you do four years. No. <laughs> you ever notice in college, whether you're learning computer science or software engineering or psychology or sociology or journalism, for some reason, all these different programs take four years. It's, it's what an amazing coincidence, right? All these different fields of study that have nothing to do with each other for some reason, economics, I can go on and on and on. For some reason, they all take amazingly four years. Isn't that a fluke? You know I'm being sarcastic, right? There's a reason for it, because they want to charge you for four years. Don't go to college if you want to be a developer, unless you're quite young and it's free for you. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it, especially if you're older. If you're uh, in your late 30s and 40s, don't waste your time. You'll get some benefit out of it, but it's not required for most, uh, for the majority of jobs. I'm not saying all jobs, some places they still, you know, they still use faxes and typewriters and uh, you know they still believe in old school stuff, but where they will require they will require a degree. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, in the development world, because the rubber meets the road quite quickly, meaning because whether you're capable or not is very evident, very quickly. Because if you write good, clean code and you're or and you well, you can speak and communicate well. It's obvious because of that. Experience it valued so much more than credentials in software development, which is a good thing. It's one of the uh, few meritocracies left in this world, which is fantastic, right? If you have a system of, of government, uh, of uh, economy, you have a society that's based on merit, meritocracy, meaning you, people who are good advance, everybody benefits in a huge way, right? Everybody benefits in a huge way. So I'll leave you with this. When I hire people, I don't pay very close attention to what they know in terms of the language. What I'm much more concerned about is what they've done. So, for example, let's say I had a job where uh, I needed a, a good JavaScript developer. I will take somebody who's got four years of Python experience over somebody who did one year um, course in JavaScript, right? Those years of experience are far more important to me. I would take somebody who's a done, who can show me four or five projects they've built for real clients, right? Regardless of the language over somebody who's got a four year degree and show, can't show me any real projects. Because I know that the person who's got the real projects has demonstrated they can actually produce, con they can actually produce code that works. Anyway, I hope this is uh, useful to you. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. 
I'm the world's oldest developer. Believe it or not, I'm 169 years old. At least that's what I tell people. Um, all joking aside, I train people in software development. I have trained people who have founded, well, co-founded billion dollar businesses. I have trained people who work at the Fangs, you know, the Googles and the Facebooks. So, um, and besides all the, my own work that I've done over the years. So if you have any questions, any comments about this video, please feel free to comment below. Um, yeah, you know, do all that good stuff. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate my videos, give it two thumbs down. And um, that's about it. Enjoy your day.